All right, guys, we are here. Finally, finally, we reached this place. This place is called Rivas, okay? Cocolisos or whatever, Cocolisas. Yeah, and basically, yeah, like, man, look at this place. This pad is incredible, actually, if you think about it. We also have a little cat running around somewhere, this is cute. Uh, which is very Lilith inspired. Yeah, Lilith energy and um, protecting us, but also protecting our path work and therefore, you know, oh. oh. And then we have the shamanic thing going on here. Ryan G, could you provide me with light? I'm just gonna show the people. Um, sure, if I can. Okay, so this is a, yeah, this restroom here, and then uh, we have uh, something outside here. But what I really want, okay, so, yeah, we're right next to the river. So you guys can hear that, right? Amazing. Amazing. Look at this kind of shamanic style, guys. Yo, this was definitely worth your trouble. Hey there, little guy. Hey. Hello, baby. Oh. Oh. Don't be shy. Little baby. You guys, check this out. They have a bunch of crystals here. I, it's like they knew we were coming here. That's freaking wild. Well, this is what happens when you're on a spiritual path working like this. You get a lot of synchronicities just randomly show up, you know? And we have a television, too. Let's go uh, do some natural grounding, probably. We're going to wait for the shaman. And yeah. Man, I always knew I was a pussy magnet, bro. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're about to watch the fucking attunements Netflix. Let's go. Okay, he's supposed to fool, that's yeah. it. So the cool yeah. thing is that there's actually a bed up there yeah. that's really freaking like, amazing. I have to recommend this place. Use Waze. And the Waze, to... yeah. You guys got to use Waze for Waze. sure. Francisco. Shout out Francisco, bro. Because you helped us with that Waze thing and, you know, it's helped out so far and oh man hearing the rushing rapids and just like you know just get a feel for that guys well this is what shamans do right ryan so yeah. really hey check this out guys you're not gonna believe this shit. this is where i live for a night <laughs> yeah Wonderful. We got a hammock over there. The Grand Rapids. We have a little cat here. You know, oh, well, we did a candle ritual last night. That's that. Of course, we have the crystals. And we have Ryan G. Happy birthday, my G. And then we have Pura Vida. And St. John. Greetings, Flow State Jedi. So I just wanted to say that you can't put band-aids on deep wounds there's a difference between temporary healing and long-term expansive regenerative lifestyle you see what i'm saying like yeah you could if you've gone through some major trauma in your life if you've really fucked up in some way in some regard you feel like you're held back you cannot band-aid that situation, my friend. You cannot sedate that situation with drugs and alcohol, with all these distractions outside of you. You keep looking outside of you for the healing. I'm telling you to go inwards. It's only when you go inwards that you can start to recontextualize things. And this is the secret to life, really, is to recontextualize. Like now that you're watching me, okay, out in Costa Rica doing this, you have a different context of you. You see what I'm saying? And so, let me just take out, take out this uh, jacket, this hoodie. So now that you're watching this, you have a different context of you, okay? They, oh, this guy is going to Costa Rica. You know, he's going to the jungle. Oh, I guess he's a shaman. I guess you're recontextualizing who I am and who you knew me to be. You see what I'm saying? So, on the shamanic path, you've got to understand something. You've got to look at yourself like the most high end luxury car. You take care of it. You take it to the car wash. You don't make your highly expensive car dirty. You don't leave 
crumbs in the back seat. You get what I mean? Like, I'm starting to recognize how important self-care is to the shaman. Because the shaman needs to focus on health first. That is the first initial thing that every shaman should focus on. Being healthy, being grounded, being connected, being alive and not limiting oneself either. You know, the reason we love this, this concept, these ideas, you know, around sacred hedonism and so forth. The reason we love talking about these topics is because, man, it's just our life, you know? It's, it's just the concept emerged out of thin air as we started living. You see what I'm saying? Like, it wasn't like suddenly out of the blue, like, we were gifted like some kind of a tomb on the top of a mountain and then that kind of stuff happens too and I'm sure we've experienced some very mystical encounters here on this island, okay? However, what I would tell you is where is your soul at? Is your, is your heart and soul in the right place? Do you really want to change the world? Are you doing this for some superficial reason? Like, do you think I'm really in this tank top for a superficial reason? Like, flexing my guns? No! just relax this is the way i am you know what i mean so it's like a lot of people they will posture and try to you know show that they're doing something or being something but man so yeah guys are you really looking at temporary fixes or would you really want something meaningful in your life to actually expand and get you to think about life very differently you know because really it's about thinking about yourself different than how you already are okay if you think of your self-image differently, if you look at the perception, the recontextualization, like I was saying, differently, your healing can maintain itself. And it doesn't become like this thing that you do that's like a quick push of a button, but rather you have control of all of the master keys, all of the buttons, all of the piano chords. You see what I'm saying? So there's not one fix for everything. But what we can do is we can focus on healing. If you just focus on the frequency of healing, eat, let's say you're sick and you keep telling yourself, I'm sick, I'm sick, man. Oh yeah, I'm really sick. You're gonna keep getting sick, <laughs> you get what I mean? So, but if you're like, I'm in recovery, I'm healing, I'm glowing, I'm getting better. This kind of self-talk is gonna help you heal faster, more efficiently. That's what I wanted to remind you guys today of, okay? Ryan G, do you have anything to say about this topic? What's your topic? Basically, people look for band-aid solutions for their healing rather than, you know, doing a program or doing something extended, like, to actually transform well, their lives. That's it. It's bad news, um, right? It's a temporary solution. It's at the end if the wound is small, whatever, right? Yeah. But I've been that guy who, especially think of the business work, Quick wins, etc. And you should definitely go for quick wins. Any quick win, no hand food you can get, just get. However, you could mistake high hanging fruit for low hanging fruit. So and right. that's what deep foods are. Like, we as children of our parents or whatever situation we have, even if we had the greatest, uh, like a big ass, big ass people, or whatever, it's anyway. Um, no chocolate. No chocolate. <laughs> anyway. Deep wounds tend to be parental in nature, tend to be parental So that means you're going to have to do things that you don't like to do. It means one, I don't know, forgiving your parents, you're going to work with us. Yeah. Uh, because that shit is painful, that shit is embarrassing, that shit is still worth it. Oh yeah, forgiving your parents, that was a really tough one actually That's for cool. a lot of us, yeah. Because, I don't know why, but we just don't have that kind of level of frankness, I guess. Or, well, what do you think it is? Well, you need to realize that, well, this you need to realize that our parents are authority figures in our lives, right? Yeah. And to know the authority figures, it's kind of, the, like, the main authority figures, especially because, like, program in. You know, yeah. I see, like, CFOs and, like, um, I accept you people, I become... Basically, kids in front of your parents. So when you wow. have to like that, you can see how yeah. this can play out. So the only way to, I would say, counteract this is just for a moment, speak to them 
not just as equals, but as, you know, a colleague of someone like, hey, this and this happened, this and this was fucked up, I forgive you, but I want to just let you know this is what's going on. And that's it. Now, Imagine if you're like a king, though, and your mom is like nagging at the king, like, that's, that's such a bad thing. And if you should take, it's not yes, a good he, look, you know? even if she's your mother, if she's your mother, you represent the kingdom. So if you represent your kingdom, be it your business, etc., that's not okay. It's they not understand, okay. they understand that's your mother, but you, you, to them, you're their king. So the moment you have this, it's kind of like, you know, the role to feel like, listen, put it aside like this. It's a bad thing for us if we do this to in public. Secondly, you can have a separate talk about you know, how you raised me in my childhood and that I forgive you all the shit that went wrong. Because you did the best that you could with what you had. That's what it is. And that's kind of yeah. the framework. And it creates a reconciliation. Myself no. and Ryan G were playing the whole Opono Ono in the car. Like, I, I'm sorry, I love you, right? Yeah. <laughs> and then, um, Basically, what tended to happen is the frequency of the car ride started to slowly shift. It's very interesting. I think reconciliation, forgiveness, like forgiveness just basically melts your heart back to openness, you know? Yeah. So that's what's really important. Yeah. It's like a lot of people hold themselves very stiff, yeah. and that's the cause of the, a lot of the problems. If you, if you can't be loose and relaxed, you can't access that flow, and well, then you can't access the I, I guess if you just understand, I say you need to become like a whip or a bamboo. Like usually you're like a non-tense until the moment you need to sweat. Oh, yeah. Right? Until the moment you need to strike. Yeah, it's different in a striking it's context, you're right, yeah. What? Like until yeah. the last second you relax, and then you hit him. Wow. Yeah, but I'm talking about healing. <laughs> no, it's the same thing. It's the same fucking thing because principles, universal principles are applicable in all dimensions, thus uh, of an oil else in life. So, when it comes to healing... How do you make your healing like a whip? Easy. When you get a massage, right? What massage is better? You relaxing or you tensing Going to up? Going the pain, yeah. It's, it's you have to surrender to the pain. So the yeah. moment you get healing, is to really be open to it because in my case, like the times I was too tense, the healing was just effective, but at times I completely relax into it to the point where I'm almost like drawing the healing in. Yeah. And, and I, also like the reminder that this pain is temporary, that kind of really helps in the moment of pain. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because it's like, yeah. it's not going to last forever. It's like, this is something I have to go through. This is an initiation again. Yeah. yeah. You know, remember the, the non peppers, the violent peppers of body? Like, yeah. <laughs> that's the only thing that kept me sane, but that thing was awful. And when I got the, 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 the chest tattoo, like for those Extreme people, pain, know, yeah. Extreme pain. get like a, a chest tattoo. Try getting that, man, and just going through that in a zen mode, like just... Yeah, yeah. and being sane and not moving. Yeah. I managed to do it for the first two sessions, but uh, when he went to the third session, that was a longer session because like they do the shading. <laughs> the shading, ah. the reopening of wounds. Uh, I thought it was healing. reopening of wounds. That's an interesting topic too. So let's say that you go through a trauma, you heal it, yeah. and then suddenly something re-triggers it. Like what do you do in that context, you know? Well, that means you mean? haven't healed it well enough. That means it's still in the subconscious, you know, it's in the background. Well, here's the thing. What I first experienced with healing and all shower healing is there might be deeper aspects of let's say the parental wounds that we don't even know of. Yeah. Like every fucking time, like I thought it was done last year, but nope. There's always a certain aspect or other aspect that we're not aware of. And that's what makes this new journey interesting. Because you should think, as you heal yourself, you heal your parents, you heal your siblings. Mm. You heal everybody in your, in your family you tree. Think, yeah, that's very true. It sounds to something that's true and fair, but fuck it. The responsibility is worth the, uh, the rewards for you. Yeah. All right, thank you so much for listening, guys. Of course, we are here in Costa Rica. It is an amazing villa that we have right here in Riva. And uh, we're about to do some step into some shamanism right now. The, the real shaman who practices what he preaches. We're going to tap into the medicine. We're going to evolve. We're going to allow ourselves to do what we need to do. We might reflect on this in the future or in the ADEPT program. That's more private. That's a more private container for you for coaching, for healing, for amplification of your you know, different 
psychic senses and you know it, it's basically a path working for flow state mysticism so if you are interested go get that also costa rica this trip is going to have other bonuses next month so definitely look forward to it because we're going to be recapping and reflecting a lot of our experiences here okay and so far it's been absolutely phenomenal and blessed but yeah let's get it upward spiral maybe never be the same again oh,